Okay, so um, this is going to be a tutorial on how to create this kind of um, effect. Um, we're looking at um, the work of Stephanie Jung. Um, so she creates these um, sort of very layered, kind of staggered um, movement sort of based images. Um, lots of them do tend to be um, urban cityscapes like this. So um, what I've done, I've opened up a um, an image in Photoshop. Um, I just found this on Pexels, so it's just like a free stock image. Uh, that I'm just going to try to um, to use to try to recreate this effect. So um, you can see over here on my um, layers panel over here, you can see I've already just got the one image to begin with. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate the layer a few times. So then we've got the same image on a few different layers. Um, because looking at what she does here in her images, I think it's one image uh, well, so some some of her works, she's got more than one image going on in it. I think this one looks like it's just one image that's been um, layered and staggered over the top of it. So um, let's start by duplicating the layer down here. So you can either um, right click and select duplicate layer, or the shortcut is um, Command J, um, and that does it a few times. I'm just going to do about five of those. So this is my locked um, initial background. And then I've got um, various copies. Now, at the moment, obviously, they're all stacked up on top of each other in exactly the same place. Um, we need to start to stagger them a little bit. So I'm going to go onto the background copy. Um, and I'm going to make the upper layers invisible for a moment so I can see what kind of effect I'm going to have. If I didn't take those um, eyes off, if I left them visible, I would be making adjustments to this layer, but because these layers are all on top of it, I wouldn't be able to see what effect I was having. Um, now, I'm going to go to um, Free Transform, which is under the Edit, um, or there's Command and T on the, um, or Control and T on the um, keyboard as a shortcut. Um, now, you'll notice when I press that, that it selects the very outer edge of the of the image. So I'm going to come onto the middle, I'm going to click and hold and I'm just going to sort of drag it and hold it a little bit like that just to try to um, make it slightly off center to what it was and I'm just going to press um, the return key to drop it. So you can see along this edge here, hang on let's go to my selection tool, you can see along the edge here you know where the um, photo isn't lined up anymore along there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start to play around a little bit with opacity because you can see um, on here the layers are sort of semi-see-through, you can see some of the buildings behind, some of the vehicles and so on. So back on this initial background copy, um, I'm going to, oh I can't adjust the opacity on that background, is it because it's locked maybe? Oh it might be. Right, in that case, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring down a different layer underneath and I'm just going to hide that one because I can't, I don't think I can play around the opacity on the locked background layer. Um, which is quite a good thing really because it means that if anything did go wrong and I wasn't happy with the upper layers, I can just delete those and I've still got the original background untouched layer there to fall back on if I need to. So I've brought down another of the background copies underneath the one that I've just um, edited a little bit. So on this one I'm going to change the opacity a little bit and you can see the effect it's having there behind. Okay, So obviously I don't want it to be that see-through, so I'm just going to bring it up slightly, maybe to about there. And then I'm also going to try the same with the top layer and see what kind of effect I can get. So you can see now, um, the more I play around with these opacities, you know, how much of the background I'm seeing, how much of the upper layers and so on. Um, now I'm gonna keep it quite see-through because I want to be able to see the lower layers quite well. I'm gonna leave it about there, I think, because I'm on 57 for that one. Now I'm gonna do the same again. I'm gonna bring the upper layer visible. So there we go, you can see the upper layers on top. And I'm going to do Command T and do the same thing again. So I'm just going to lift it and drop it somewhere. I'm just going to bring it maybe like that. And I'm just going to press return on the keyboard again. And again, I'm going to play around with the opacity a little bit. Um, so we can see the lower layers starting to show through a little bit like that. Now it could be a case of 
um, that once I've played around with the opacity a little bit and I can start to see through the, the lower layers, that if I do Command T again, you know, I can help, you know, that will help me to sort of position where I want it to be. So, I, I, you know, maybe a case of of making sure that I can still see, um, you know, some of the, the, the pedestrian or, or looking to see where the buildings are overlapping and so on. I'm going to bring down the opacity a little bit further on that. I'd quite like it to be a little bit more see-through. I'm going to do that. Um, and I'm going to do it one more time on this one. Now, it obviously depends um, how many times you do this. Um, on what kind of effect you get, you know, if, if you only do it um, a couple of times. Oh, I tell you what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to press shift on the keyboard and I'm actually going to change the proportions of it a little bit like that. So I've um, pulled on the corner um, square and I've just enlarged the image slightly. If I didn't hold down shift at the same time, it would make it go a bit sort of wiggly and squiggly and out of proportion. So I've kept shift down as I've pulled the image larger so that it stays in proportion. And I'm going to press um, return on that and then again lower down some of this opacity so we can see what kind of effect that has. That's looking quite nice, I quite like that. Now you will notice as well that because of all these um, layers, you know, sometimes the colours are looking a little bit murky, um, you know, the Obviously, with the opacity going down, we're losing definition in particular areas. Whereas in Stephanie Jung's work, you can see certain areas are still very, very clear. So what you could also do is you could also use the dodge and burn tool. Now, the dodge tool lightens things and the burn tool darkens things. Um, you will need to make sure up here you've got the right size brush selected. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Not quite that small, I don't think. Hang on, maybe there. That's all right. Um, I want the exposure to be a lot less than this because it is quite um, a powerful tool. Um, and I'm going to work on the shadows for now. So um, I've obviously got the, the top layer here selected. So I'm working on the top um, the top layer. If I go over the, the shadows of the man there, you can see that starts to d define those shadows a little bit more. It's darkening those shadows. I may decide to do some of the um, uh, the building area over on this side. Now let me check what brush I've got. So I've got a soft edge brush um, which is quite nice to use for this because um, you don't want anything to be sort of too defined. Um, work into that a little bit there and we'll try a little bit over on this side as well. Now if, the, if, you're, if you find that you are um, trying to darken or lighten an area and it's not working it could be that you need to go on to a different layer and then try again and again that will give you um, some different pixels to try to darken or lighten depending on depending on what you're doing okay and um, if you're getting confused as to what layer you're working on just hide the others and then you can see what you're working with and you can just darken the areas that you want to work with on that layer and then you can hide that one work on another one and again oh sorry I'm on the wrong layer and then again you know work into that one darkening those sections that you want to pull forward and make more of a feature. Now if you um, are done with the shadows you could go on to the mid-tones if you wanted to. So if I just make these visible again you may decide that some of these sort of mid greys need darkening or um, or lightening if you want to use the, the, the dodge tool instead. Um, and then if you wanted to work into the highlights obviously you would need to choose the highlights um, one on there. And the higher this number the darker or the brighter the effect of what you're trying to do. Okay. Um, I think that's probably about it really. Um, the other thing you could potentially do to bring some stronger links through to Stephanie Zhang is, um, you know, on here she's got sort of very um, earthy kind of tones, sort of, the sort of dirty city colours, um, but she's got this bright yellow coming through, um, obviously very significant for the New York taxis. If you wanted to bring through a particular colour on here, so for instance there's a bit of a blue flag here and this building looks quite blue in the background as well. So we could enhance that a little bit. So um, let's um, let's get rid of a couple of layers and I can see which ones I'm working with. So I'll start with that one. Um, I can come up to, oh hang on, make sure I'm on the right image, there we go, right layer even. Uh, come up to adjustments and, um, sorry, before I do that I'm going to do a selection. <laughs> I'm going to use the magic selection tool over here. Um, that's going to help me pick up the pixels that I want to affect. 
So I'm going to try to um, let me zoom in slightly. I'm just using Command and the plus key. I'm going to Command D to deselect that. I'm going to try just to get that blue grey building selected. That's a bit better. Now I'm going to do the image and adjustments. Let's go into saturation, hue and saturation to begin with. So first of all, I could pull up that um, saturation level. You obviously can see me making it really, really blue. Um, let's just um, adjust it for about there. I think that will do for now. Um, and you could do the same with the flag. So I'm going to just deselect that. And then I'm going to select the flag a little bit. Let's see what happens if I um, make an adjustment on that. I haven't been particularly careful with the um, selection on there, but that's okay. We'll try that. Okay, so I've done it on this layer. So I'm now going to go and do it onto this layer as well. So um, I'm going to deselect that, hide the background one, and then again, just go in to select that blue building. Play around it with the hue and saturation again. Saturate it a little bit more, maybe like that. And then uh, Command D to deselect. And then I'm just going to select that, ooh, select that, select that flag and do the same again. Now I could do this on every layer if I wanted to, um, just sort of adjusting things slightly as I go along. Um, let's see what happens if I look at it like that now. Um, let's zoom out. Oh, that blue is sort of coming through a little bit stronger on there. Um, you know, it could be a case of um, if that blue is not particularly strong um, or there's not enough of that colour, maybe this sort of like deep red within the building I might want to enhance that red and maybe some of the red on the uh, on the pavement or in the flags here even maybe they got it looks like they've got the American flag there um, so yes yeah, so you could play around um, with deciding which color you're going to enhance that's another sort of experimentation thing that you could do um, to hit that AO2 mark um, and yeah, again, with the um, dodge and burn, you could show that you are enhancing particular things in each um, on each layer. And again, you know, each time you do this, you could come up with a different outcome, really. You know, just using that one image, I could do this several times and choose a different colour each time to enhance, choose different shadows to enhance, and then I could put them on a, on a PowerPoint slide and then visually compare them to see which one is looking stronger. Okay, there we go. Um, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope that's been useful for you.